Underground Blossom is the latest installment in the Rusty Lake series, entailing the story of Laura Vanderboom through important moments in her life, shown as stations on an underground. All the installments are intertwined and follow one major story with many recurring characters. Keep in mind that for this video, I will only focus on this installment and may lightly touch on the other installments. The underground train stopping at the Crypt Station, the protagonist is met by Rose Vanderboom, the mother of Lara, someone who was artificially born using a magical substance known as the elixir thought to give immortality. Rose has a stroller and a suitcase with her, with the time seemingly being first half of 20th century, during the childhood of Lara. This seems to be the beginning of Laura's tale, with the spectator being the protagonist going to different stations, witnessing the passage of Laura's life in different parts of her life. Rose asks the protagonist that she's glad that he's here, asking him to take care of Laura. I'm glad you're here. This is my daughter Laura. Please take care of her. Just with that said, the protagonist moves on to the next station, being the Child Lane Station, appropriately called that as it depicts the childhood of Laura when she grew up a little. In the station, Laura seems to be around 6 years old, with Rose again asking the protagonist to take care of Laura, especially in the years to come, as she won't have any other choice than to abandon her. We see a statue of Mr. Owl here being a prominent character in the Rusty Lake series. Laura being playful and quickly shown to be a happy child, she is forced to grow up faster when her mother, Rose, is taken away by a dark figure wearing a deer skull mask. Hello, I am glad you come. The mother, I will come faster, she moves. Look into the eyes of the earth. She has to come with me. The earth is on her own. As Rose is taken by this figure, her purse is left behind intentionally for the protagonist, having a letter written on how she loved her daughter, but she knew from the beginning that this would happen and she could not reject her fate. Despite that, she entrusts her timepiece to the protagonist to give to Laura as it would protect her, a very important piece of item. The protagonist vows to protect Laura and gets on the train to go to the next station, being the school street when Laura is older, being a teenager. In here, Laura asks the protagonist to help her find the images of her mother, the last things she has left of her, images which her classmates stole from her, obviously playing a very cruel prank on her. The protagonist manages to solve some puzzles and find the images which Laura greatly appreciates, but strangely, she instructs the protagonist to catch his train before it leaves as his task here is over, up until another segment of her life. This displays the supernatural and surreal nature of the protagonist on how he is capable of going through time and space like different chapters to assist Laura in the key moments of her life when she needs help the most. Even Laura Laura seems to be somehow aware of this, appreciating his help, yet informing him that it's time for him to leave to come back when his help is needed again. It seems as if the protagonist is an eldritch being who vowed to look after Laura after the kidnapping of Rose. The protagonist subsequently gets on the train to get off at the next stop called Bird Bridge Station, being another important segment of Laura's life. In here, Laura is older, seemingly being in her 20s, where she starts dating someone by the name Robert Hill. Unfortunately, their relationship doesn't seem to last as they break up, but despite that, Robert still seems to care about her, where he asks the protagonist to purchase a cup of coffee for her. He works at the Johnson Bird Food Factory and instantly recognizes Laura, but strangely, Laura seems to struggle remembering him, asking the protagonist if she has seen him before, being early signs of 
her dementia. Even Robert asks the protagonist if Laura still remembers him or has forgotten him being a wiped memory. The protagonist causes Laura and Robert reunite and seemingly reconcile, being a key moment in her life, especially as she will struggle to remember many things, needing as much help as she can get with daily tasks. She paints her most vivid memories in an album to remember, with her mother Rose being the prominent figure in her life and past, not knowing what happened to her, including Mr. Owl, a corrupted dark soul and the dear skull entity that took Rose. Some other important segments of her life was her teenagehood, but unfortunately, she didn't have a great one as she was mostly alone, seemingly having no friends. Keep the figures on this album in mind as they will play important roles later, even in her future. The album seems to be a sad collage of her life. The protagonist subsequently gets on the train, reaching the Sorrow Cross Station. In here, a sorrowful depiction of Laura and Robert's breakup is seen, with Laura asking Robert to leave her behind and that they both have to follow their own life paths. As if implying something is wrong, something impactful, that would make it very difficult for them to stay in a relationship, which seems to be her early onset of dementia. She knows how difficult this would be on Robert and how when she starts forgetting, not being able to do simple daily tasks anymore and requiring 24-7 care, there would be no happy memories anymore and only sadness. Therefore, the best course of action would be to simply break up, not willing to force Robert sacrifice himself and his life, depriving him from a happy life so that she wouldn't be alone. Laura is brave enough to understand the gravity of her illness, not wanting Robert to sacrifice himself for her. Truly a very selfless and brave decision by Laura, something many people would be afraid to do. This is not to mention how difficult it must have been for the both of them as they loved each other very much and it would be extremely difficult to go on their own ways just because of a tragic illness. This leads to Robert leaving Laura after trying to help her for a very long time, even going to the White Door Mental Health and Fishing Organization. Yet, not being able to be any use any longer, he leaves entrusting Laura's safety in the protagonist's hands. Please take care of her. She is not well. The White Door is of course another installment of Rusty Lake or Cube Escape series, where Robert is actually the protagonist, entailing his backstory and challenges, expanding on the relationship that they had. The tragic lineage of Laura Vanderboom seems to be a direct reason for her mental health problems, having vivid nightmares and troubling memories and thoughts, which are deeply rooted to what she has fated to become and what their ancestors intended to do with the children, using them as a blood sacrifice for their worldly gains associating with dark magic and corrupted souls. Dr. Clark, Laura's psychiatrist, prescribes her medication which help her have insights of her troubling thoughts and maybe have some sort of closure. Her nightmarish dreams include Robert, her younger self, her mother, and the other animal-human hybrids such as Mr. Crow and Dear Skullman. Her dream shows her deepest concerns and fears and the worst experiences in her life, and how Robert had a broken heart not being able to help Laura and stay with her, as she longs for her mother's touch, someone she lost when she was only a child. She dreams of the corrupted soul holding the head of her mother and having control over her, and finally, the protagonist being Harvey, a feathered parrot who accompanies Laura throughout her life, also being of supernatural nature. During all of this, Laura is seen to fall down, with the corrupted soul consuming and overtaking her entire body and soul, making her become corrupted as well. Of course, this is explained much more in the other installments, where Laura dies due to years of being tormented through horrifying thoughts, visions, dreams, and memories which don't even belong to her and have been inherited by her from her ancestors. These difficult thoughts and dreams drive Laura to insanity, which she cannot take anymore, losing her life. This is depicted through a dark, corrupted soul emerging out of her and taking her life. 
This is the tragic tale of Laura, but of course, it is a lot more complicated than just this. As Harvey, a sworn guardian to Laura, is not done going through time and different worlds and dimensions, trying to save her. Getting on the train again, this time around, becoming close friends with the train conductor who refers to Harvey as his favorite passenger, Harvey bids farewell to the saddening part of Laura's life, or in other words, and of her worldly life, being surrounded by the police and a detective, going to the next station called the Soul Street. The station represents the isolated and tormented soul of Laura who is desperately trying to find her mother's timepiece. In fact, Laura's story is not over yet and even in death and the afterlife, she is still suffering, tormented by the guilt and the deeds of her ancestors. Helping Laura's soul finding Rosa's timepiece by torturing a man, they both get on a train and leave this ominous place to the lake station. In here, Harvey helps her to move on from this world by finding the timepiece, an important element to go to the next world. Laura explains in here that she belongs in this place, a place where the Vanderbooms reside, their memories, past and present and future, essentially their remnants. Rose is found in this place, seen both as her younger self when she was made to leave Laura and her older self when she passed away, depicting how she is, the essence of her time in the world and how she was perceived. Both versions plead with Harvey to help Laura blossom and finally be happy, having the happy ending that she truly deserves. Harvey in return in this afterlife, a place of rest and retirement for the good souls, helps Laura blossom him through what she was and what she could be, becoming the full potential of herself in her optimum age, free from any mental distress, any illness, the mental health condition that she suffered from, from abandonment, fully being happy and released from sorrow. She thanks Harvey for being a stellar companion to her, always watching after her and helping her, instructing him to go ahead and have the life of his own now, free from any burden or responsibility to others. And that is exactly what Harvey does, getting on the train and starting his own journey. But through finding some secrets, we see Harvey traveling to the Rusty Lake Manor, meeting with Mr. Owl, that his story is just to begin. Now let's take a look at a few mysteries in this installment. Who is the Deer Skull Man and why did he take Rose? Well, the Deer Skull Man is the corrupted soul of Albert Vanderboom, a resentful, jealous, and selfish man who kills his own family members due to resentment. He is the father of Rose, Rose, who was artificially born. Him taking Rose away seems to be because he wanted to be reincarnated and required Rose to help him achieve this goal. And that is why we see the old Rose in a lab coat, as if she has been researching and experimenting throughout her life to bring him back. And unfortunately, this meant Rose had to abandon Laura to fully focus on this task. And also, Albert seems to need Laura as a sacrifice to be reincarnated. Hence why she becomes hunted by these terrible visions and dreams, eventually dying, being a representation of Albert indirectly causing her death to achieve his sinister goal. Rose seems to have no choice in this matter and was forced to obey Albert, achieving this sinister goal. And finally, Harvey is a grey parrot which seems at first to be Laura's pet. And we also see his drawing in her album, but as it turns out, Harvey is of higher nature, being a humanoid parrot capable of looking after Laura during her worst times. Harvey was a guardian and a companion who had connection to Mr. Crow and Mr. Owl, who are the representation of some of the ancestors such as William, whom I won't get too deep into explaining on this video. Keep tuned folks as I will explain more Rusty Lake installments in the future videos.